Yes. Number one, they can't find any deals. Everybody hear that okay? Find any money. Well, today I'm not going to focus on the second question there. I am going to focus on the first about how do I find good deals? Because after all, if you find a good deal, you can find the money to back that up. In other words, if you find a great deal, you should be able to find a way to put it together. So really, everything comes down to finding a deal. Well, my name is Brandon with biggerpockets.com. And today I want to share with you my top 10 strategies for finding great real estate deals, even in a competitive market. All right, I apologize, it took so long. All right, so I'm gonna go through all 10 of these. I'm gonna use this little whiteboard here. It just kind of makes the organization just a little bit easier. I'm gonna walk through each one and you guys can kind of learn a little bit about- All right, you guys can still hear, correct? Now keep in mind, you don't need to do all 10 of these in order to find a deal. In fact, just focus on one of these right now and rock that, become really, really good at that one avenue. Uh, and if you want to branch out to more and more, then you can always do so. But let me give you the list of the top 10 that I use to find a good deal. So number one, let's go back over here. Are we on, are we on screen right here? I think so. Let's go number one. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is the what's called the MLS. It stands for the Multiple Listing Service. Now, maybe you're familiar with that or not. The multiple listing service is basically where agents put their properties for sale. So if you're a real estate agent, you're probably going to list it for sale on the what's called the MLS. Uh, it's where, again, if you're like, hey, I'm going to go and list my property for sale, the agent is going to put it on the multiple listing service. So all other agents can go look at it. Now, of course, that's where most people in the world go to look for deals, or at least in America. And so it's the biggest playground. There's a lot of properties there. But there's a lot of people looking as well. So if you want to do good on the MLS, you got to be a little bit smarter than the average bear. So I got four tips for doing that. First of all, I would recommend finding an investor, an investor friendly agent. If you have an investor friendly agent, they can help you find the best deals that are out there because they understand what you're looking for. So first tip is that. Second tip is look for what's called a hidden potential. Now, hidden potential means you're looking for things that nobody else sees in a property. For example, when I look at a property, I might want a, you know, three bedrooms do well in my area, both for rentals and flips. And so I want a three bedroom. I'm going to look for two bedrooms though, that have a lot of square footage because maybe there's some hidden potential in that other room. All right. Number three, look for fixer uppers. A fixer upper obviously is something that needs to be fixed up. A lot of people don't like buying them because they're a lot of work. There's a little bit of risk involved. So if you can look for a fixer upper, you can sometimes find an amazing deal that way. And then number or tip D is going to be be either the first or last. Be the first or last in a deal. When you're trying to buy in the MLS, there's a lot of competition. So you either need to be the first one to jump out a deal, which means get up automatic alert set up for deals that match what you're looking for. When deals come on the market, don't delay, don't wait, rush, go get them or be the last one. In other words, wait and look for deals that have been on the market for months and months and months, maybe even years and go and negotiate on those ones because nobody else is looking at them anymore. So the competition is a little bit lower. All right, moving on to number two. I want to talk about something called driving. Okay. I'm going to stop in there. Uh, so looking at these, First things he listed. Now, I can tell you, I, even in my book, by the way, my book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. Uh, this is uh, number one bestseller, or not, it was number one for a little bit, uh, but it's in the top sellers of real estate on uh, Amazon and Kindle. Uh, I've been buying and selling real estate since I was 19 years old. I was a millionaire by 28, and that was a long time ago. Uh, this book is basically how I made my first million and how I made tens of millions afterwards. And there's a lot of different little things. There's a lot of different ways of making money. Uh, and we're going to get into it here, but let's, we'll keep going with Brandon here, but I'm going to speak to the MLS stuff that he just talked about. First of all, uh, the MLS, listen, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even deal with an agent that didn't have a membership to the MLS. Uh, that especially goes if I'm going to list one of my properties with him. Uh, now, he talked about the first thing he said is finding an investor friendly uh, MLS person. Well, they're, in, they're they're friendly with everybody. OK, they want to make a sale. They like investors. They like, you know, I mean, listen, they make money off sales. That's how it works. Uh, so 
I've never really had one that really is was, uh, un investor unfriendly, to be quite honest. In fact, uh, they like you the best because you're you repeat business. Um, sometimes I might get a little uncomfortable uh, and, I, and I'll, I'll give them a little break on that. Some people are uncomfortable. There's once in a while you get a really green agent. And I mean, they're afraid of their shadow, uh, much less to, to put an, an offer. Uh, to, to on a property that's lower than maybe they feel this particularly and this is something he didn't mention but i'll mention this real quick i always try to go to the listing agent you go to the listing agent they stand to make double if they got a six percent commission coming uh you know if they get both sides of it if you don't know how it works you list a property and you'll you'll say three percent goes to the selling agent and you get three percent Sometimes I give agents four and a half percent. I don't always give them a six percent listing. And the reason I do that is I'll give them a six percent listing if it's a two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar property that I'm having them sell sometimes, or if it's a, a three hundred thousand and up, then I'll, I'll knock it down to four and a half percent. But I still designate that the selling agent gets three percent of that four and a half percent, and that's an important distinction to make because you always want the selling agent to be motivated, okay? And so they should always get three percent. And uh, and the reason I, I'll cut an agent from six percent on something they sell from me uh, down to four and a half percent is quite simply because uh, it's the same amount of work to sell uh, a three, four, five hundred thousand million dollar home as it is to sell a uh, two hundred thousand dollar home. OK, basically, they put it in the MLS and somebody else finds it that's looking for a home. Uh, it's not it's rarely that they get both sides of it. So uh, but the bottom line is and agents don't like it when I say this stuff. But the fact is, why would I pay you twice as much to do the same job? You know, if you, if you sold a house for me last year uh, for two hundred thousand dollars at six percent and now I'm giving you one at at uh, four and a half percent, and it's a four hundred thousand dollar home. You're making the same money, okay? You're, you're. Why, why would I pay you twice as much to do the same job that you did last year for, you know, half as much? So, you know, they still make more money as the numbers go up. And if they get both sides of it, a lot of agents, you know, they try to entice you. Oh, I know everything about real estate. I'll find you a buyer right away. And really, their efforts extend to put it in the MLS. Somebody else. Boom, picks up and grabs it. And as a courtesy to my agents, and I don't want to, I'm going to run him at high speed in a minute. But one of the things I do with uh, uh, agents uh, is, um, oh, heck, I almost forgot what I was talking about now. Uh, anyways, I always try to, uh, oh, I know what I was going to say, is I'll let them, I'll give them a week sometimes. I'll give an agent, you know, feel strongly they can find a buyer. I'll say, you know what, four and a half percent, fine. And I'll even give you a week of trying to sell it and, and let them not put it in the MLS. I'll let them drag their feet, put it in the MLS for a week. And that way they got a full week to run it by whoever, you know, they can go in their office and they might have somebody else in the office that has a buyer. And so they get the benefit of, of getting that both sides of it, if they can, if they can. And, but after that week's up, it's get it in the MLS right now and let's go find a buyer. And, you know, everybody wins on that too. So his uh, second point Brandon made was uh, what did he put here? Uh, hidden, hidden potential. Okay, yeah, I mean, sure. If you can, like, can I talk about this too? You find a property that is maybe an oversized lot, and I, I and I'll give you a real quick example. I've got a property uh, that's like this. Okay, here's a street. Okay, there's houses here. Okay, well, I got this extra large lot here, and the house happens to be at the front. This is the street, right? Well, up front of the street, that's where the house is. It's right up front here. Well, it's an extra large lot, okay? It has the potential to be split like this. And now there's two more lots. So the house is on, it's 600000 These are all $600,000 homes, right? On these lots like this. These are six hundred grand, six hundred grand. Well, they can't be split because they're just deep. They're big, but they're deep. But with a corner, this is another street. I can split this like this. I can build another house here, build another house here, or even if I don't want to build it, I can just simply split the lot and I'll get 350 or I'll maybe get 300K for this lot and I'll get $300,000 for this lot, okay? And I'll still get 600,000 for this house because you really don't get a lot of credit for the land, but that's hidden potential, right? You find a lot that's very big, that's houses placed right, 
and now you've got an opportunity to split it. Maybe maybe just make one lot. But even if you bought a house for six hundred, so you could pay full price for it, six hundred thousand, and maybe that's even ten thousand over the market. You go ahead and buy that ten. You go ahead and buy that lot, okay? And then that's hidden potential. So I'll give Brent, Brandon that. You split it, and now that's your hidden potential. You sell that lot for three hundred grand. And now you got a house that's still worth, you know, five ninety that you maybe you you know you bought. Anyhow, just want to throw that out there because these are the kind of things you'll learn from me, from my book. This is thirty years I've been buying and selling. I mean, I've been a millionaire thirty years. I've been buying real estate for longer than that. I hate to say it, but it's true. I'm getting old. Uh, so, all right. So let's go on. What was his last point? Uh, uh, fixer uppers. Okay, fixer uppers. Listen, I don't love fixer-uppers. I've done a lot of them. You can watch. I just did one where I show. I bought a house for 160000 sold it for two hundred and sixty. dollars I ended up putting about 50000 in it. I thought I was going to get away with a little cheaper than that. But the fact is, it, you know, it takes time. You know, I mean, when I say 50000 that and I poured a little bit of concrete, did some work. But in the end, I, uh, you know, it just, I would have rather just bought it already fixed up for 50000 under market and just flipped it and made forty dollars than make uh, 40 50 and hold it for six months. So... Uh, and then last one is oh, being first, being there first. Okay, and I'll tell you, it's always important to be there first, and that's why it's so you got to really diligently work your neighborhood. Because, like I said, uh, I'll, I'll let my agent, you know, put a house up for sale for a week before it's in the MLS. So if you're driving your neighborhood, don't count on, don't ever rely on the MLS. The MLS is like a phone book. It's like, hey, everybody, this is for sale, but. If you drive your neighborhood and you go through them regularly, you'll spot it first. You, you might see the, I mean, believe me, I probably bought five houses in my lifetime where I actually saw the agent or the sign guy that works for the agent putting the sign in the ground. I'm calling them before the post holes dug, okay? And saying, hey, let's make a deal. And, and I make a deal and I make a deal. So uh, that's, where I'll leave that. Let's go see what his second strategy is or his second tip is. Four dollars. Now, driving for dollars is this idea where you get in your car and you go out and you drive and you look for vacant properties. Now, what does a vacant property look like? Nah, you might be looking for something that has overgrown lawn, like, you know, up to your waist or even like, you know, up to your shin, whatever. Like something that's like, Clearly has not been mowed in quite a while. Uh, looking for piled up newspapers, looking for boarded up windows, uh, looking up, looking for windows that have no curtains inside. That can be a really telltale sign if there's just no curtains in any window, no blinds, no nothing, just open. Uh, I look for little white pieces of paper that's on the windows. A lot of times that means there's some kind of legal action going on there. Uh, again, look overgrown, like just junk in the, or just junk in the yard that looks like it's been there a long time. Those are just a few indications. And the more you do it, the more you'll realize what a vacant house, they kind of stand out like a sore thumb, not too hard to find. So what you're doing when you're driving for dollars is you're looking for these properties. Then you're going to go home and research. You're going to look for the owner of the property. You can usually find it online on your county assessor's website. You want to contact the owner and uh, just hit them up with either maybe a letter or if you want to call them, if you can do some phone number research and Call them and say, or email them and, or mail them and say, hey, you want to sell? Not everyone's going to sell, but some of them might. All right, moving on to number three, something that a lot of experienced investors are doing today, and it's something called. Okay, I sped them up a little bit so we can run through this a little quicker. Uh, okay, driving for dollars, which, you know, that's actually a new term to me. <laughs> we didn't call it that when I was younger. Anyways, it, all, everything he said is fine. It's all good. Uh, but even more than that is looking for houses that are screwed up, that are occupied. They're occupied and they look like hell. That can be a great opportunity because what it is is you got a landlord that can't control his tenant. He might even be afraid of his tenants. Uh, I had a situation where I had uh, actually kind of a pretty young girl looking for a dog. Well, turns out she lived in a house that was always had loud music and always kind of a disaster. And I got to talking to her because her dog wandered over to my property and uh, uh, I helped her actually take the, bring her dog back. And I go, Oh, you live here. And, uh, she said, yeah, we're going to probably move out. And, you know, and I go, Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I got a hold of her landlord right away. And 
He didn't even know they were going to move out. He just said, man, I'll sell you the place. He goes, but these guys are a handful. So I already knew they were moving out too. And so we made a deal and I bought that property and I, I made, I can't remember what I made, but I'm sure I made 50,000 on that deal. But uh, so driving and looking for problem properties, uh, you know, and th that's one of the things you'll learn in my book is same thing is not just that, but you, you really learn. You, I mean, you'll get a sixth sense for it, to be quite honest. When you are passionate about real estate, and like he said, a lot of things are obvious and stand out, but there's other things too. Sometimes there's less, like you might drive by and you might see a sign laying face down. Well, guess what? I'm the guy that goes over and lifts that sign up. Okay. I'm not saying I'm going to fix it. Okay. But if I see a, a sign laying down, like on a lot or whatever, I'll go over there and I'll go, ah, and I'll climb out there in the field. It could be a big sign in the field that's lifted up and take a look at it, write that number down. Cause sometimes that sign might be then been there for three years and the guy selling it's wondering, man, nobody's calling on it. Well, and I know why, because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't diligently make sure his sign is front and center and, and, and posted for everybody to see. And so I make an offer and shoot, maybe since the time you put the sign up, you know, values may have doubled by then. So who, who knows? But those things do happen. And uh, so anyways, uh, driving definitely, I mean, it's a joke with my family. Everybody knows if my eyes are open on the road, there is always a definite chance that I am going to stop. I'm always sure to to uh, take pictures of signs. In fact, if you don't have my app, I have an app, uh, the Flip Anything app. You can get it on Google and Android. It's free, 100% free. And I don't I don't see your deals, whatever you put in it. I don't see it. I don't see it. But uh, that app is great. It's a uh, uh, Flip Anything app, and you can get it on Android and, uh, you know, the iPhone one. Uh, uh, so be sure to try that. You'll like it. Yeah, it's a great little assistant tool. Uh, what else? Let's, let's, let's move on and try to keep up. Cause he's going to be talking fast. Direct mail marketing. Now, maybe you've heard this term before. Direct mail marketing is something do, done in a lot of different industries. For example, uh, car dealerships love doing it, right? So you get a piece of mail in, you get this piece of mail that says, congratulations, you won a new car. And you didn't really win the car, but they're just trying to get your, your attention on this, on this paper that maybe you'll go test drive a car. And then if you test drive it, maybe you'll end up buying it. So it's just like this funnel that they're trying to get. They mail it thousands of letters, hoping a few people end up test driving and a few of them end up buying. Same thing with real estate. You send out thousands of letters, hoping that a few people will call you to sell their property. And then a few or a few of those calls will turn into sales. So you might send a thousand pieces of mail. You might get 30 phone calls, 20 phone calls, 50 phone calls, 10. I'm not sure. It depends on your area and how good your marketing is. And then at the end of the day, you might only close maybe one deal, two deals, five deals, no deals. You know, it depends. It's just that same sort of funnel. So uh, direct mail marketing can be a great way to scale up your business because if you want more deals, just spend more money on letters. And typically a letter might cost you around a dollar, somewhere in the vicinity of a dollar to send, you know, including postage. And you know, you can save some by doing the work yourself or you can spend more and have somebody else do it all for you. A lot of companies out there that will handle direct mail marketing for you. Uh, so keep in mind that with direct mail marketing, you want to focus on four things. The first one is your list. The second thing you want to focus on is the actual mail that you send out. So your list is who you send to. So maybe absentee landlords or people that are 90 days late on their mortgage, or you can buy lists online. Uh, secondly, mail, you got to, what are you going to mail? Postcards, letters, whatever. Uh, C is going to be to focus on your funnel. What that means is focus on every part of that. How many letters did you send? How many phone calls did you receive? How many you know deals did you close? Um, do you work on that funnel and always keep track of that funnel? Where are you at? How can you improve it? If you got 50 phone calls out of a thousand letters, that's 5%. What could you do to get 7% or 8%, right? So you work that funnel. And fourth or D here, you've got the follow-up. Focus on your follow-up. Because the key with direct mail marketing is you never usually get the deal on your first mailing. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you get lucky. I actually, my, one of my first mailings I did last spring to a, to a part of my list, first mailing got me a deal. But that doesn't always happen, right? So the follow-up is what's important, is remail these people over and over and over. I mean, you might want to mail them you know, every other month or every month or every three months, whatever you decide, for years. And eventually when they're ready to sell, who are they going to go to? Somebody they've never heard of? Or maybe contact the guy who's the house or the guy or the girl who's the house buyer. So again, that's kind of how direct mail marketing works. Moving on to number four, we're going to talk about whole... All right. So everything he said is pretty much true, but there's actually some mistakes in the way that people direct mail marketing and he didn't address any, you know, I don't even know if he for sure that he knows, but I can tell you right now, uh, direct mail marketing is expensive and it's something, look, I, I mean, I can tell you right now, 
uh, I think I'm a pro at it. Okay, I've been doing it. I started doing direct mail marketing when I was when I was uh, 19, and let me tell you, back then it was tough. I have to pull the the information off a microfish. I had a microfish reader. If you don't know microfish, it's like microfilm. It it reads a little tiny speck and blows it up on a little screen. And I used to have four girls working for me, and their job was read the microfish. And I created my own database. I was a data miner before anybody else even did it that I knew of. And, and there's certainly the, the the stuff that you have available to you online now is unbelievably great. But people do it unbelievably wrong. So you, you want to get my book. If you've got an interest in owner finance, if you've got an interest in uh, in uh, in direct mail marketing, get my book because uh, there is thousands of dollars to be lost in discouragement going into direct mailing when you do it wrong. And people do it wrong all the time. You can imagine I got a lot, I have over 120,000 square feet of rentals and I have, I have piles of letters okay horrible letters horrible cards everything's done wrong and the other thing is a lot of those i shouldn't even be getting it then i shouldn't even be getting it okay people know what they're doing i wouldn't even be getting the the, the, the letter because let me tell you one of the other things when you do internet mail marketing you study the audience before you you, you throw out your your uh, your mailing but uh, anyways yeah and by the way my book is uh, 10 bucks on kindle and it is 20 bucks on uh, Amazon and paperback. And uh, it's the beauty of the Kindle is you can, you know, within within this book, I've got, I mean, besides t holding you by the hand, basically, this thing, but I have links. You can click a link and you go to a video like this where I expand on, on the relevant subject in a video. So, uh, you know, you need a little more help than what you see there. That's okay. You can get the long extended help by just clicking on the link and going in and reading it too. Uh, but yeah, well, Jim, you're right. Jim wrote here too much competition. You're, you know, you're hundred, you're a hundred percent right. There's a lot more competition, but guess what? There was competition back even when I was doing it, and it just not everybody is motivated. Not everybody, and this is what separates you guys. The fact that you guys are watching right now to what is kind of a boring video, right? A, a, you know, a screen and this and that. You know. Other people watch and, you know, they don't sit there and absorb. And I see a lot of names that I, I know, I, 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 you know, Anne-Marie, glad to see you. I'm, see, you're serious. You're serious about making money. That separates you from everybody else. Believe me, I get some of the, I mean, once in a while, I get people, and I'll tell you right now, if I'm going to mentor you, you can't be somebody that asks dumb questions. You got to read your book. You got to read your book because I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I want to help people that want to make money. And if you're serious about making money, then then you'll do the work. You'll do the work. You know, you study a little bit and you guys are doing the work. You are watching and you're you're absorbing. Right. And, you know, repetition is good. You might hear some of the same things, some of the same stories. But believe me, if I if I when I repeat something, it's because I know it's important. I know I want you to get it. And I'm telling you some of it now that we're going to get into a lot more on my channel, which by the way, if you just watch me the first time, hit subscribe, hit subscribe and hit, uh, hit like and hit the notifications button. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff. You know, I got a nice big studio now. Take a look at this, a very big studio here. And uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to be doing some serious sharing here. Okay. And uh it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great for you guys that are new to it. Uh, but uh, hitting the share button uh, helps me. Uh, it helps my channel grow. And, uh, you know, a lot of you, if you would hit the notifications, even if you don't have time to watch my video, even if you just take that notification, jump in there and go, hey, I'm going to support Tom and you like it. And or, you know, some of you new folks that are watching, just just subscribe, just subscribe. What do you got to lose? You can unsubscribe later. But uh, uh Anyway, so let's we'll go on with Brandon here. And what was the last point you made on that? Oh, somebody help me here. What else did he put here? Yeah, follow up. Yeah, I mean it, it is, but you know that the, you don't have to send out thousands, okay? Thousands of letters. I mean, believe me, that believe the people that I'm getting emails from, or not emails from, but the people that I'm getting the bright cards and all that stuff. They're the ones that are sending out thousands and they are going to suffer fatigue. They're going to suffer the financial fatigue of spending money and getting no results. 5% is not a good result, folks. It's not a good result. You got to know what you're doing. So uh, let's, let's move on to the next, uh, list, next thing. And by the way, Brandon's, everything he said is fine. Uh, you know, it's, there's nothing bad about what he wrote. He's not getting into details, but you know, 
Anyways. All failures. Now, let me write it down here. Now, a wholesaler is somebody who goes through all of these things that we're going to talk about today, and they do a lot of different strategies to find good deals. Now, once they find them, they don't actually want to buy them. See, a wholesaler is a middleman, so to speak. A wholesaler finds good deals and then basically just sells them, flips them, or however they transaction they want to do it. They get the deal to an end buyer. So there's a lot of wholesalers out there today that are out there looking for good deals, and they're just going to mark it up a little bit. Maybe they get the deal under contract for $50,000, and then they're going to see if you want to buy it for fifty five. dollars now, they make a quick $5,000 just by marking it up, but fifty-five might be a great deal for you or, you know, $200,000, 500000 whatever, numbers are irrelevant. Uh, but the point is, wholesalers can be a great way to potentially find deals, but you got to find the wholesalers. I'd recommend network. You got to go to local real estate clubs, network on bigger pockets, find people who are excited about wholesaling and talk to them. Tell them what you're looking for, what kind of deals you're looking for. All right, moving on. Number five, and that is auctions. So an auction, obviously. Okay. So a uh, uh, note on direct, or not direct mail, but on the wholesalers, okay? So look, I get called by wholesalers all the time. And, you know, I, you know, they don't listen a lot of them. You know, I tell them, okay, look, I'll like this neighborhood. And then they bring me crap that I don't want that's in different neighborhoods. That, and that's on them. I, the other thing wholesalers make huge mistakes on is, you know, every time I list one of my houses, you know, I got four wholesalers making an offer. And what I do is I end up telling my agent, say, look, any anybody offers you less than X, don't even answer. Just ignore it, and unless they're within you know five percent of what I'm asking. If, unless they, unless they, uh, unless they uh, uh, get within five percent of my asking price, I tell them just ignore them or or let them make the offer. Tell them to make the offer, but I ain't gonna open it. And then it comes in my email and a PDF, and I just sit on it because I'm irritated with the wholesaler. I'm irritated with the wholesaler that. He's not doing his homework. He wouldn't be writing. He wouldn't be sending me a letter if he was doing his homework. Number one, and and that's why I say, you know, folks, get the benefit, get the get the benefit of my of my expertise and and my experience and in, in the in the years that I've been doing this stuff. Uh, it, it makes a world of difference when you talk to somebody that's actually talks, you know, walks walks their talk. Okay, and, and I've done it. I got the chops. I've been doing it for many many years and uh, been very successful at it. And the only reason I share it now is because it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm wealthy. And, uh, but even I can tell you, even I'm careful in my own, in my own neighborhood, believe me, I have tenants, you know, I have hundreds of tenants and, and they watch me on here. Some of them watch me. Most of them I don't even tell in town that I'm even out doing this show, or, you know, that I have this thing. But, because what I don't want is I don't want somebody interfering with my area, what I'm looking at, what I'm buying. And so even when you, when you get my book, okay, you're going to keep this stuff a secret to yourself. You're not, you don't need to, you don't even need to do it with your wife. Some people look for motivation with their wife and you know, it's, it sounds cute and romantic, you know, couples doing this stuff. And maybe if you got a real partner that does it, that's fine. But a lot of times, you know, people get held back by their, their spouse, you know, they're negative or, you know, they, Oh, I don't want to invest any money. So and I tell people when wife or, or the husband is discouraging you just say, Hey, you know, what? let's just split the money right now. And I'm going to invest in real estate on my own. And this will be my profit. Okay. Because you don't need somebody holding you back. You don't need somebody telling you, Oh, I'm scared. You know what? When you know what you're doing, when you know what you're doing and you go to buy something, you should never be scared. You should be scared that you're not going to get the deal. You should be scared that they're not going to sign. You should be scared that something's going to go wrong because what you're going to know, you're going to know that I make, oh my God, they're going to sign this. I'm going to make some money because you know value. You have to know value. It's it's number one. You got to know value. And the people that are too lazy and believe me, the wholesalers, the people that send out these cards that make ridiculous offers that get ignored. You know, if they got a little more reasonable, they might get the deal. If the wholesalers were a little more reasonable, they might get the deal, but they're not, they're not, they're, 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 it, it just, it's just how it is. And that's what comes, but they learn, they'll learn, they'll learn. If they don't burn out, burn themselves out trying, they may learn and they may do better. But if they burn themselves out and burn their wallet out, do mailings and believe me, they'll, 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 they'll give it up. They'll give it up. They'll, they'll be done. All right. So let's, let's continue. You all know what that is. It's where you go and you, you bid, right? But there's mainly a couple types of auctions that you're dealing with in the real estate space. First of all, A, you're going to be dealing with uh, what's called like online, I'll even say online private auctions. 
Now, what an online private auction is, it's something like auction.com, right? So auction.com is a site where you can go and you can bid on properties. A lot of bank repos, a lot of banks that are, you know, repossessed properties and going to resell them. A lot of times they go through companies like auction.com to sell their stuff. Now, there's another type of auction that you could potentially look at, and those are government auctions. Auctions. Okay, I'm going to stop them right there, and then I'm going to start taking questions from you guys. We, we've taken enough. Sorry, it took me so long to get rolling in the beginning. Uh, to auctions, I can tell you right now, tax auctions, property, I, most of them are a waste of time. Uh, there's just so many people there, okay? And uh, and I'm not just, believe me, and I'm one that goes the extra mile and shows up and goes with people. But a lot of times, if you, you can catch properties before they go to auction. You can catch people bef before they get in the trouble where it ends up going to a tax sale or an auction, uh, or, you know, uh, you know, unless you're a big portfolio vendor and you want to buy a por somebody's portfolio, then auctions are great too. But in general, what I do like about auctions, I'll tell you one of the things I really like about auctions is I like them for not, not real estate. I like them for things. If you get on my channel, flip anything USA, you'll see, I bought a scenography machine. Now I didn't even know what it was when I bought it. But I found a box with a very sophisticated device in it. And I know this is valuable. Well, everybody else looked at it and they go, we don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. Well, I looked it up, went through the serial, and I found out that this thing projected an image on stage on the background. So like when you go to a play, it kind of simulates rain and it simulates snow. And, you know, it just kind of adds a little uh, ambiance to the theater, uh, you know, puts a background behind everybody that's working. Well, this thing was $15,500 brand new. And this thing was like brand new. It was a government auction. Government buys crap and it sits on a shelf for 10 years, then they sell it. You know, it's just like the ventilators in New York. You know, they had whatever, thousands of ventilators, cost tons of money, they let them sit, and then they sell them. Never been used. And that's government. Massive waste. So government auctions are good for finding things and huge wasteful money. Now, I will say, I, you'll see on my video, uh, I, I did, I'm in a silent auction. In fact, one of my most prized properties is a little three acre corner that I bought that I beat a group out that was trying to buy it for Walgreens. And it was, uh, it's a beauty, it's a beauty. It's where they got the food park. You guys know I have a food a food park, uh, you know, whatever you call it, food truck, food trailer park. If you don't know, come check it out, but uh, on that property. But that was a beautiful, I bought an elementary school and I bought it in a silent auction and just watch the video on that, but so, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's take some questions and, uh, you know, how about some feedback? What do you think of this format? Do you guys like this? All right, Max, I'm glad you got the book. I see a lot of people have said they got the book. I'm glad to hear it. Lay Monet's, that's great. Yeah, hey, Amazon, listen, just because you're under 18 doesn't matter. You can go find something that's a fantastic deal and have your dad buy it or your mom buy it or, you know, uh, somebody you know that you trust that's older to go in on it with you. Don't let that discourage you. I was studying real estate before I, I could afford to buy it. Yeah, that's right. Get the deal before the auction when you can. But sometimes I can tell you the, the deal that I bought at auction, I bought a beautiful three acre property. I, uh, I, first time I bid on it, I got outbid. Somebody bid a million four. And then a month later, I, you know, I kept calling because I don't believe just because I get outbid. I'm always trying to be number two. I always try to be there. I'm always standing on the sidelines in case number one. Well, I got beat out. Number one got it. Oh, it's been sold. And I said, well, all right. Well, and I kept bugging. Well, it closed, it closed, it closed. And then the next thing you know, they say, no, we're, we're putting it back out to auction again. And then it went out on auction again. Then I bid a million three or, or I don't know what I bid, but somebody outbid me. And and then it, it went back and they said, oh, Tom, this time it's going to sell. It's going to sell. It's a group that's buying it for Walgreens or an Eckerd's. And see, whenever you know that you're one, one of the beauties is when you're going up against a group, a group that means more people like maybe five maybe three maybe ten those guys almost always are losers on at the at the bargaining table because other people's money's involved they don't have the decision to say i'll take it okay so i go in there and i said look i don't care if it's a group or not listen i go I probably I, i'd say it's not going to make it they ain't going to buy it they're paying too much they're not going to it's not going to i mean i'd say that no matter what they're not going to make it they're not going to buy it and 
I remember I was laying on the sand in Hawaii with my family. I was about to just, you know, and I was still calling them every day, even on my vacation. Believe me, I'm relentless uh, when I want something. I don't quit. And uh, I called him the day before, and I, I said, his name was Hale. Hale, I go, Hale, did they sell that thing? Yeah, what's going on? I, and he says, no, nah, Tom, believe me, this thing's got solid. It's solid. It's going in, you know, they're going to bring their check tomorrow, and it's solid. This is like for the closing. And I'm like, yeah, all right, well, I'll call you tomorrow. I don't believe it. And the next day, my phone rings, and I pick it up, and I go, hey. And I said, hey, Hale. And he goes, Tom? I go, yeah. And he goes, they're stumbling. They're stumbling. I said, man, I knew it. And before I would let me back up just a little bit. When I put in my third, I had to go a third time. The third time that I bid on it, I wrote him, and I said, I wrote a note to the, the, uh, the school, with the board, and I said, stop taking the highest offer and take the one that's going to close. That's mine. And so they were looking. They, they held on to me. They didn't open it up for auction again. They said, you know what? We're going to listen to Tom. And they go, oh, he's saying. So in other words, they considered me as a backup offer. OK. And I did it through the auction system. Silent bid. I said, hey, the guys in front of me ain't going to buy it. If I if I don't get it, take the, don't take the highest offer. Take mine. Mine's going to go. And so they held on to it. And so, he, so Hale says to me, he says, well, Hale, they, he said, Tom, they still don't really love your price, but they don't like this thing falling out either. And I'm like, I ah, no, I'm staying on that. It was like, I think I was paying a million two, or I think I paid one million, I know what I paid. In the end, I paid 1,175,000. And I said, Hale, I said, I'll buy it. I'm not going up another dollar. They should have taken my offer the first time. And it's 1,000, you know, 150,000. And uh, he said, okay. And so he hangs up, and then I, get, I can't stand it. I pick up the phone again. I said, I'll add 25000 make it $1,175,000. See, now I was bidding against myself. I was going crazy. I probably would have still got I probably would have got it anyways. But I thought, ah, I can't take it. So I said, add 25000 And he called me back a half hour, and he said, Tom, it's yours. I go, oh, man, so happy. And I love this property. I love this property. And uh, so... That's what happened. Okay, so that's a true story. That's how it happens. That's my auction story for you. I, and I have many, but that that's like probably my best one. Uh, cool. Oh, is that how many people are watching? How many people we got watching right now? I, I can't even tell. How many people we got watching? 101? That's good. Look, 101 people. Buy my book. Subscribe. I've been doing this a very long time. I, uh, you know, I, I sell a book. I make $7 on this thing. Okay. It's nothing. Okay. I, I am starting to open up some mentoring, but only to a select few people, not, not many. And even then you, you know, you, believe me, I'm not trying to get mentoring. I just, I help so many people for free as it is right now. But since my book's been selling so well, my, my email gets filled. And what happens is I get a lot of clutter from people that really aren't so serious mixed with people that are really serious and need help. And so the only way to, to thin it out is I got is I do the mentoring thing. It's not very expensive, and uh, it thins it out. It thins it out. But number one, you got to have my book. If you don't have my book, you know that's the number one thing because uh, so many people ask me questions, and I'll say, "Do you have my book?" Because the question doesn't sound like you have my book. And so I just say, "You know what? I ain't gonna I ain't gonna write the same answers, answer the same questions a hundred times in a week." Sometimes that happens because I get the same questions. And it's like, just read the book. Spare me from writing all this. Spend 10 bucks. You know, it's it's just the way to go. All right. That's great. So, look, please share. Please subscribe. Hit that notifications button. And, you'll, you know, I'm not always – I'm going to set a set time eventually here. Uh, you know, I like Saturdays. Is this, is this a good time for talking? Would you rather this or 10, 10 a.m. on a Saturday or something like that or 8 a.m. on a Saturday? Of course, that could end up being 6 if you're in California or, or you know, uh, you know, East Coast. It could be end up being uh, 9, 9 uh, or 11, I guess. Yeah. Actually, I don't rent it to a private school. I have several schools that rent from me, but the school, the, actually the, the elementary school, I've had software, jujitsu, gym. Uh, I mean, a whole range. It's a very big property, and you got to remember, sometimes one classroom is a rental, and uh, you know it's it's full of it's full of a lot of smart people, to be honest. Uh, 
All right. Yeah. How about and then in the evenings, because I'm probably going to do more of it, to be quite honest. But do you guys like this format? Do you like this format? OK. Yeah. Yeah. Please let me know that you like this format, because, look, I'm trying to this is a little bit easier for me to do. You know, there's there's no, no question that I wouldn't answer. And, you know, I don't have to sit here and think about it. And, you know, I don't have to make up something before I, I go live. I can go live. And I mean, believe me, I speak my mind. If I don't know something, I'll just say I don't know. OK, but I know a lot. So I know I know I know plenty enough to make people millionaires that I know. I know I know I know plenty to make you a millionaire if you take what I tell you and, and, and you you move with it. That I know. But I don't know everything. But you don't need to. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know how to make some money. All right. So you guys like it, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. It is smoother, huh? Well, I like it. I like it because the one thing is, is I don't have to answer the comments. I don't have to write the, you know, I have to answer comments all the time. Uh, you know, if I get some... You know, I can, you know, hey, actually, you know, when I do the, the live call-ins, you know, if I, uh, if I have a, uh, you know, if I'm doing one of my, you know, like right now, Brandon Turner could call in, right? Well, no, he can't. You know, I just, if I, I could put the link down, right? I could put the link down into the stream, right? I could put that, I could post that. And then if somebody disagrees with what I'm saying, then call in, we can argue it out. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy. Listen, I love the devil's advocate playing the devil's advocate. Some people are sensitive to having their ideas shot down. Uh, I'm actually one that when I when I propose to do something with my, my closest best friends that are, you know, smart guys, you know, I'm like, OK, come on, tear it up. Let me have it. And that's the way that I get true feedback that may try to kill an idea. And it's because I want I mean, show me that I'm wrong. Show me that I'm wrong. OK, because if you don't, I'm going to move forward. I would much rather have somebody cut the legs out from under me and break my heart by showing me that I'm wrong than to for me to just go forward and waste my time on something, you know. So. Uh, yeah, Joel, you can Joel, I've made 300 videos on what I do. Yeah, I'm on top of roofs. I'm remodeling, I'm buying, selling, I've, all that. I've already got a whole library of that crap. A lot of people think, and that's the other thing. This is supposed to be the beauty of YouTube. You don't have to just watch what's current. Go back in history. I mean, I, 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 wrote, I did a video, I don't know, a week or two ago. And I mean, I got some that are years ago. Where, hey, made 60 grand on a lot, made $140,000 on this, made $300,000 on this, made $2 million on this. I mean, those are exist, Joel. Just go back in time. You know, I, I get irritated with people getting irritated with me, you know, uh, speaking to what other people do. And like this here, I mean, I haven't been terribly hard on Brandon. I'm talking to Brandon's about his, I'm reviewing his product. I'm reviewing, reviewing what he, his video and that's fair game. And you know what? Somebody can do it to me if they want. And you know what? It may be, maybe they'll have a point. I don't know. But again, in this particular case, I don't have any particular disagreements with Brandon on this, but you know what? I'm going to do a part two on the rest of this thing too. And we'll finish this up. But, uh, uh, anyways, so, uh, uh, let's see any other questions. Let's get to it. How about you, Joel? You got a question? Uh, Aaron, again, I just told you, Aaron, get my book. That's what I recommend you do right now is go get my book. Get it on Amazon right now because the question you just asked, you know, do you recommend wholesaling and assigning to a group? What did I just tell you about a group? I just beat a group out of a deal. OK, and because and I just told you why groups have multiple decision makers. You're setting yourself up for heartache when you sell to a group. A group sounds good. Sounds like a lot of money. But guess what? A group to me spells trouble because they are people that that they can't that don't have enough money to operate by themselves. I'd much rather sell to one person, assigned to one person, than a group. You get it? Well, you, okay, okay. Well, thanks for buying, it, Aaron. Sorry to be hard on you, but I just told you. I just told you. And this is why repetition is good, by the way. OK, and I can even tell you myself, I read my book. My book motivates me because when you take the exercise of writing a book, when you take time to teach people, which writing a book is teaching. OK, and I can't talk fluff. I just I can't even stand to listen to it. I mean, I fast forward through stuff because I can't stand it. So 
I read my own book because because when I wrote the book, I took I try to think everything through, and and I you know and it makes you think a little deeper and it makes you just get more concise, and so it it actually even motivates me and it keeps me on track. So and and I'm going to add to it. I've got a bonus chapter. I've already sent the bonus chapter out. Uh, just so you guys know, I've sent out like hundreds, hundreds of bonus chapters out, and the email that goes out, it'll say that only you know. 40, 70% of them, 70% of them have been opened. And that means 30% of the people didn't get their bonus chapter. And so if you don't get it, somebody actually complained in a review on me, which pissed me off because that's not critiquing the book. That's critiquing the damn email system because I've sent everybody's out. But anyhow, let's go. Yeah, yeah, Joel, they're out there, buddy. No, no, and I'm, believe me, listen, <laughs> I'm not very thin-skinned, so yeah, I, I appreciate you asking or saying any comment you got. Like I say, I like people playing the, the devil's advocate. And uh, uh, anyways, yeah, there you go, Don, too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, believe me, partners, I don't even like partnerships when I buy real estate. I've had one partner, ah, I, I lie, I've had a couple when I was younger. But one of my favorite partners passed away about four or five years ago. Uh, maybe not less than that, actually. Uh, he was in his 80s, and, and uh, he was actually somebody I was trying to, trying to talk him out of his property. And uh, he had a thing called the Beverly Apartments, and I would joke, I'd call him, and I, you know, I had a good rapport with him. And I'd say, hey, you want to sell the, the Beverly Hills Apartments? Because he was so proud of them. And one day we met up, and we went through, and we, we went through the analysis, and I said, look, you know, I said, you know, you want this, but look and this, and then look with the mortgages. How the hell am I, how am I going to pay this mortgage with these rents that you have? You know, his rents were low. And uh, he's like, you know, you know, and so I was just trying to lead him to lowering the price. Well, he was nobody's fool. He was a sharp guy. And he says, you know what, Tom? He goes, I really like you. <laughs> he goes, but I'm not going to sell you my property. He goes, but I'll tell you what. He goes, I'll invest with you. And that was a real you know, vote of confidence. Was, I'll invest with you. And six months later, I had a deal. And I was paying 205 cash for it. This is like 20 something years ago. And I said, man, I'm a little bit short, Les. I said, I can buy it, but I'll be a little thinner on money than I want to be. It was kind of tough times at the moment. You know, I mean, I owned a lot of property then but still, but I own probably more than I should have had at the moment. And I said, but I'm going to buy this and I'm buying more. So I said, hey, Les, look, I got this thing. Uh, 205,000. If you can send me, you know, 70 grand, uh, maybe it's 210. I said, send me 70 grand and you can be a one third partner. And you know what? And the guy liked me and trust me. I've only had one meeting. He sent me a check. He just wrote a check to me for $70,000. Just, just straight to me. He trusted me and, and I can be trusted, you know? And, and so, you know what, that, that was the start of the fantastic partnership last many, many years. Uh, he's passed now and now his two sons are my partners. And, uh, you know, and they're, they're just as great, you know, uh, you know, I, like I said, I, in, in this partnership, I own 70 or 66%. I own two thirds of the deal, right? I let them be a one third partner. And in all honesty, that's the only way I, I really operate. I have to own the majority of it. I have to hold the reins. Okay. I have to hold the reins because, and, and the beauty for somebody that's my partner is that the guy that owns the most has the most to lose. So, of course, I'm going to be diligently watching the property. I don't mind doing all the work when I make most of the money. And that, that's my philosophy on that. And it's just human nature, I think, anyways. Yeah, Ross, just email me. Email me. Tom at Flip Anything USA. Uh, I'll put it in here. Uh, it's in your book, by the way. Uh, I think on chapter, every three chapters, it, it instructs you to uh, send it if you want the free chapter. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, if for any reason you don't get it in a week, just just assume that uh, uh, it got lost, or check your spam folder, or something like that. Check your spam folder. Uh, all right, man. Hey, yeah, that is that's the smoothest one. I'm I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay, there's a lot. I've got some other cool stuff that I'll be able to hit a button and it'll do a transition or something. I don't know, but I'm playing with it. You know what? It's funny. Okay, so Hosu, 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 Hosu Rivera, uh, what do I think about the Burr strategy or the BRRR strategy? In all honesty, I don't know what it is. I've seen that. I've seen that come up a little bit. I am going to do a video on it. I'm going to find out what it is, and we'll do another video just like this, and uh, we'll we'll go through it and talk about it. 
And uh, so look, I know there's been a lot of comments going on while I was talking. And uh, so if you got another question or two, we can get to it. Can, can somebody tell me how long we've been on? I can't, I can't tell because of the stream software. I mean, I just can't, I don't know what it is, but. Oh. Well, hey, hey, Yankee Doodle, then, hey, you can still give him a notice. You can still, you know, I, believe me, I had a business, same thing. The, the, the thing he did wrong is he wasn't communicating with me. And so I just had, hey, I, I, gave, him, I just gave him one last text, and I said, hey, here's the deal. Uh, I know you're having trouble. A lot of people are. But the bottom line is uh, I haven't heard from you. And so I'm going to go ahead and proceed how I do. And I wasn't very clear about it because I, I, it can be nasty. Yeah, my kids are young. You know, my, I got my, my boys are playing the stock market. And my girls, you know, I got one, one still in college, one's out of college. And, you know, the one's, this one that's out's an accountant. And, uh, but she's, man, I'll tell you what, she's going to own some property soon. She's socking the money away. I can still see her bank account. And, man, talk about a saver. I wish I could save that much money when I was that age. It's crazy. She's, she's doing uh, extremely well, getting paid well, and doesn't, she's frugal. She's frugal. <laughs> and I'm not. 55 minutes. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that, Rob. Yeah, well, you know, give them notice, but it's important, you know, you can still post and, you know, let them know, you know, and let them know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what their excuse is. Most people got a check. I don't know anybody that didn't get a check. Let me put it that way. You know, uh, I even got a check for one of my companies and and it kept me from putting, you know, it, it saved a lot of jobs. But uh, yeah, I still have the Cayenne. I got a beautiful rip in it that long. Looks like somebody put a knife on my seat. I have no idea how it happened. My boys say they didn't have anything sharp in their pocket. Uh, Brian, I reviewed the strategies that I just saw, and that's it. And those are the only ones I'm aware of. Can, what, can somebody tell me what BRRR stands for? Is that an acronym for something? Yeah, so uh, listen, I, I put my email in here. It's tom at flipanythingusa.com. Tom at flipanythingusa.com. The only way you won't get it is if you don't email me. Okay, if you email me, you know, maybe I'll even make it, maybe I'll even post that chapter somewhere so everybody can just pick it up. Uh, but uh, uh, anyways, I don't know. I just know that you're supposed, you need to email me. Amazon doesn't send it to me. Amazon doesn't tell me how to, it doesn't get sent to you. Okay. It's by email and it's clear in the, in the, in the book, it says, uh, you know, it, it says, uh, basically for a free bonus chapter, write Tom at flip anything, USA.com and write bonus chapter or free chapter in the subject line. And then, you know, we get a lot of emails, right? Tons of emails. And if you don't put as instructed in the, in the subject line, you may not, it may not get to you right away. I tell you, my, my, my email box is full every week. I mean, it gets, gets behind. There's hundreds of, of inquiries about all kinds of things. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, old school, I understand. Yeah, like I say, uh, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a wedge deal or it's a hack or it's a this. Shit, it's just a good deal to me, okay? It's a good deal. <laughs> it's a good deal. Oh, okay. B, what, what's a hey, uh, David? What is a uh, what is a uh, the B R R R R? Apparently, I didn't know there was four R's. What does that stand for? Oh, buy, renovate, rent, refi, repeat. Ah, well, I would skip on the renovation, <laughs> okay, and I would probably skip on the rent right now. I would just be. Uh, uh, actually, I would just be buy and flip, okay? I would be buy and flip. I can tell you right now, unless you have a lot of money, this is real important. 
if you, you know, if you don't already have hundreds of thousands or maybe a million dollars, okay, hanging on to property is not, I mean, it just, a little bit depends on your lifestyle and what you work. I mean, if you're somebody that has to work a lot, you know, maybe buying and holding is a, a better plan for you. Uh, but number one is buying right and buying under market. At least you, you jump ahead of everybody. You know, that's your hedge against things going bad. If you buy 25% under market or, or more, then what happens is if the market starts to go down, you get a little bit scared, then you can dump your property. You can sell it quick. And then you can use chapter chapter 27, chapter 27, right? And, and I know some of the folks watching will tell you what that means. I'm letting them do it. But chapter 27 it, you use that, use chapter 27, you know, and, and, and get ahead of it, get ahead of it. Uh, ah, Joseph. Ha ha. Thanks. Actually, anyways, I have an app called Flip Anything, so I might have got it, but it would have been the wrong place to send it. But uh, uh, yeah. Oh, man, I can't see what's going on. Oh. Yeah, you know, I, I, renovation is fine, and I do a lot of it. And you can see the videos. I've done many, many renovations. You got to remember, I maintain about 120 to 150 thousand square feet of real estate every year. I mean, I have crews, and that's what they do. You've seen Beto, you've seen Amado, you've seen Antonio. If you've watched my videos, you know I've got. A, I actually have a crew of people that work for me all the time. Hey, thanks, Rui. Glad to hear it. Uh, uh, leapfrogging. Leapfrogging is chapter 27. And leapfrogging could be at an auction, jumping ahead to buy. It can be jumping ahead to sell low so you can get out of stuff. All right. Well, hey, if, uh, I'm going to call it quits, guys. An hour is probably plenty. Uh, anyways, please uh, hit subscribe. If you're new, hit subscribe. I promise I won't waste your time. If you don't like me, I understand. You can leave. But uh, get my book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. It'll be the the smallest investment and the most bang for your buck that you've ever, ever had. That I promise you. And uh, uh, I'm going to call it quits. But uh, uh, like again, please, uh, please share too. share with other people. Have, point other people to this. The more the merrier. Right. And uh, uh, I appreciate you watching. And uh, we'll uh, we'll do it again soon. We'll do the other half of this thing soon. And uh, that's it. Thanks.